Assalamu alaikum welcome to betlek today the topic of discussion is human microbiology <clears throat> so microorganisms play a very important role in the life of living organisms particularly ruminants because ruminants get energy by the uh, fermentation of ingesta in the rumen and microorganisms that uh, like bacteria protozoa and fungi that are present in the rumen cause the fermentation and digestion of this ingesta these microbes are actually present throughout the gastrointestinal tract uh, but they are more abundant in the rumen so the number of these microbes and the species of these microbes which is present in rumen at a particular time uh, depends upon uh, highly depends highly upon the nature of the diet and feeding regime therefore on fibrous diet the bacterial count rises uh, but it is relatively lower on the concentrate diet Uh, the species of microbes and metabolic activities of rumen microbes are nearly the same in all ruminants uh, but the activities like fermentation is higher in lower sized ruminants uh, like it is a, a fermentation rate is higher in sheep than in cow usually the number of bacteria in rumen is uh, higher than that of protozoa uh, but the volume density of protozoa is equal to that of bacteria it means that the volume of protozoa and bacteria in the rumen is equal uh, but the number of bacteria is higher than that of protozoa which are present in the rumen 70 to 80% of the digestion of dry matter occurs in the rumen therefore its temperature is kept 38 to 42 degrees celsius and its optimum ph is uh, uh, 6 to around 6 to 7 so it is uh, either neutral or slightly acidic and this neutral or neutral or slight acidic environment allows my micro rumen microbes to function properly but the acid fermentation which uh, which is caused by these microbes in the rumen uh, usually raises the ph uh, but this raised ph is uh, kept to its normal value by the saliva and in this way rumen environment is kept uh, normal let's talk about bacteria a wide variety of bacteria is present in rumen and there are about 29 genera and 63 species of bacteria that are found in the rumen and these bacterial species are classified as amylolytic proteolytic and cellulolytic the function of amylolytic bacteria is to act on starch so the concentrate rich or forage based diets are dominated or uh, are acted upon by the starch degrading amylolytic bacteria or fibrolytic bacteria which are present in the rumen and they mainly degrade the starch or fiber and produce a, a, a large amount of propionate or acetate proteolytic bacteria can produce protease enzyme and this protease enzyme can break down peptide bonds into protein molecules cellulolytic bacteria secrete cellulolytic enzymes that cause the hydrolysis of cellulose and increase the digestibility of the feed ingredients majority of the bacterial species play no important role in the process of digestion and therefore they are known as casual passers in the rumen they are either in the free floating form or adherent form uh, amylolytic bacteria dominate in the fluid portion of the rumen while proteolytic bacteria are found attached to the food particles so amylolytic bacteria are in free, free floating form and proteolytic bacteria are in adherent form in, in the rumen in the absence of protozoa the number of bacterial bacteria increases the bacteria which are found in the rumen may be spore forming or non spore forming and some spore forming bacteria like clostridium, clostridium perfringens type d uh, is normally found in the rumen of uh, sheep and goats although this bacteria is very harmful but it is present in very small amounts in the rumen of bacteria and its effects are uh, uh, countered by the heavy density of useful bacteria now let's talk about the functions of bacteria in the rumen their first function is that they bring about the digestion of carbohydrates and proteins and themselves are the source of uh, proteins so they break down the carbohydrates and proteins which are contained in the diet uh, and uh, they themselves act as a source of protein for the animal uh, these bacteria can also synthesize proteins from npn substances npn substances or non protein nitrogen substances is a term which is collectively refer which collectively refers uh, to components like uh, urea ammonia and uh, and uh, urea and ammonia uh, which are not proteins themselves but they can be converted into proteins by by the ruminant microbes 
so the bacteria which are present in the rumen can convert urea and ammonia into proteins the bacteria which are present in the rumen uh, can also synthesize vitamins especially uh, vitamin b complex group in addition to the benefits of bacteria there are also some adverse effects of bacteria uh, for example they can degrade the superior quality proteins that are more useful than the bacterial proteins so in this way they uh, uh, this is the adverse effect of bacteria similarly the bacteria present in rumen can cause uh, excessive ammonia production and this ammonia is either lost in gas form uh, or urea form and in this way it causes loss of nitrogen uh, from the body moreover this uh, highly excessively produced ammonia has uh, has adverse effects on the liver kidney and particularly the brain and other unpleasant uh, effect of bacteria is that when the useful bacteria count falls then harmful bacteria uh, predominate the useful bacteria and in this way these harmful bacteria can cause diseases and are and uh, prove to be harmful for the animal the digestibility and solubility of bacterial proteins is also less than that of the dietary proteins so all these were the uh, harmful effects of bacteria now let's talk about the protozoa which are present in the rumen the protozoa which are found in the rumen are actually anaerobes uh, and they are larger in size than the bacteria but they are but they are lesser in number their volume density is exactly to that of bacteria but their number is less than that of bacteria protozoa found in rumen belong to two families these are isotrichidae and ophyroscolicidae the isotrichidae family is mostly ciliated and are called holotrix and this family contains uh, uh, two genera uh, one is isotrichia and other is decitrichia on the other hand of phyroscolicidae family uh, are mostly unciliated and are called ol oligotrix and this family contains two uh, contains four genera uh, that are Entod entodinium diplodinium epidinium and uh, of phyroscolex so isotrichidae are ciliated and of phyroscolicidae are uh, unciliated Isotrichidae or holotrix act on the soluble car carbohydrates and oligotrix or ophyroscolicidae uh, mostly uh, act on the cellulose and hemicellulose and because and as a result of their action the VFAs or volatile fatty acids uh, and fermentation gases are produced so both these families cause the uh, production of fermentation gases and volatile fatty acids and both these families uh, only ferment the carbohydrates holotrix in addition to acting upon the soluble carbohydrates uh, also synthesize a body reserve protein which is called amylopectin the protozoa that are found in the rumen are very sensitive to ph and they can be destroyed at ph of 5.5 or below and therefore the ph of the rumen is nearly neutral so that it can accommodate its microflora population as i have said that holotrix also synthesize uh, a body reserve protein called amylopectin uh, this uh, synthesized protein pro protozoal protein uh, is superior to that of the bacterial protein the establishment of this uh, young uh, of this proto protozoal fauna in the young one uh, depends upon the direct contact of neonate with other ruminants so the complete isolation of young one from other ruminants causes poor development of the stomach of young one because there is no development of fauna in its stomach now let's see the functions of protozoa so these protozoa can synthesize volatile fatty acids as well as vitamins these protozoa also engulf the bacteria and make, make bacterial proteins available to the body of animal now let's come to the third microorganism which is present in rumen and this microorganism is fungi the role of fungi is actually not properly understood uh, in the rumen but they are thought that they digest the but it is thought that they uh, digest fibrous diet like cellulose hemicellulose and pectin microorganisms are not only found in the rumen but they are also found in the small intestine and large intestine of animals so the microbial population of small intestine is lesser than that of the microbial population of rumen and large intestine and most of the bacteria that are found in small intestine are casual passers and serve no purpose and now let's come to the microbes of large intestine 
the population density of the microbes of large intestine is almost similar to that of rumen and these microorganisms are present in large intestine of both ruminants and non ruminants uh, in case of non ruminants uh, microbes which are present in large intestine only these microbes cause the fermentation of fibrous diet and in this way they make good contribution to the energy by forming the nutrients by the process of fermentation and therefore gases like carbon dioxide methane and hydrogen are produced and released accordingly so the bacterial genera that are in uh, that are present in the large intestine uh, these bacterial genera include bacterioids fusobacterium streptococcus eubacterium ruminococcus and lactobacillus similarly protozoa are also found in the large intestine and these protozoa are mostly ciliates in case of horse and elephant uh, the large intestinal microbes are well developed and they are highly significant the function of these microbes of the large intestine uh, is to digest mostly the fibrous diet uh, fibrous diet like cellulose hemicellulose pe and pectin as well as the digester that escapes the pre intestinal digestion and release and in this way they release the nutrients some nutrients are also absorbed in the large intestine Uh, and they yield energy to the body so the major function of these bacteria is the digestion of fibrous diet and digester that is coming from the stomach to the intestines so now let's discuss the factors uh, that affect the microbial growth and development in the body of an animal so we have already discussed that when the number of protozoa decreases then the amount of bacteria uh, uh, bacterial count increases Similarly if the animal is suffering from prolonged starvation then it also decreases the bacterial count the number of microbes and species of microbes also depend upon the uh, age of the animal and diet of the animal for example cellulolytic bacteria uh, predominates during first week of age of animal while lactic acid bacteria predominate at 2 to 3 weeks of age the cellulolytic bacteria and lactic acid bacteria are not fully established at the time of birth because the neonate uh, after birth uh, consumes only fluid diet and there is uh, and there is no need of uh, cellulolytic bacteria and bacter lactic acid bacteria bacterial establishment because uh, the neonate doesn't consume the fibrous diet so both these bacteria establish gradually and when the anim animal uh, starts to consume the fibrous diet then their uh, count increases another factor which affects the microbial growth and development is the abrupt change in diet of the animal and uh, provision of antibiotics to the animal another uh, factor is the isolation of uh, neonate from other ruminants and we have discussed it in great detail nature and quantity of feed supplied to the species also uh, affects the microbial growth and development if an animal is deprived of any particular substrate uh, then it may reduce the strength of particular bacteria for example the deficiency of soluble sugars and starches uh, decreases the number of streptococcus bovis in the organ in the animal